Hello, guys, gals, and monkey gender pals. It's been a hot minute, hasn't it? It's been a while <laughs> since my last uploaded. Well, there's a, a few reasons for that. Mainly the fact that I got a little, little strikey-wikey, if you will. Uh, Susan slapped the hand down and uh, gave me a strike. And it's not on the video that you would think either. It's not on the Kanye video. It was, in fact, on a video I released well over a year ago where I was literally just fucking around and not taking shit seriously while taking a political compass test. So, out of all things, that's the one that happened to get me a strike. Um, it, it makes absolutely no sense, but neither does YouTube. So... Yeah, so I was barred from uploading for a little bit, and, and then I also just haven't been very motivated <laughs> to make videos for a bit, but we all knew that a after this election cycle, I felt like I had to, had to cover it, you know what I'm saying? So, um, here we are. This is the uh, Fried Pepe election analysis and breakdown. Of course, by yours truly. <laughs> so, let's get right into the data. Uh, YouTube really doesn't like it when people discuss elections in any way that is even remotely critical. So, I'm going to have to fucking tiptoe the hell around this entire subject in this entire video. So, I'm going to try real fucking hard to do that. <laughs> but I'm still going to fucking make it because I think it needs to be talked about. Let's uh, get the get the facts right out of the way first. This was an absolute fucking nightmare. Um, despite the entire economy collapsing, despite all of the bullshit that has gone on, uh, despite the universal countrywide hatred of the current administration and despite faith in the current status quo and the current establishment being at an all-time low we still did not take the senate the republican party uh still did not take the senate and i i, I hate saying we because the republican party is a fucking joke and it always has been but um i still think that I, it is the only option, really, realistically, um, right now. And obviously, yeah, um, a good thing to bring up is the Republicans did have control of the Senate during um, uh, the beginning of the Trump administration, and they didn't do jack shit because Republicans don't want to do jack shit because, you know, they're, they're all puppets of the state. Uh, they don't care about you, and, and we both know that. But what... I think needs to happen is we need to start purging the Republican Party of all establishment type people and replacing them with individuals who are actually going to take action and are actually committed to fighting back and taking back ground from the left. And I genuinely do believe that that is something that we can achieve. But first, we need to have full control of the, I think, the government or at least mostly have control over the government um, to be able to actually do that. And that sadly didn't happen, even though I think it very well should have happened. And I'm going to get into why I think uh, that didn't happen, why the uh, talked about red wave uh, did not happen, although we did take the House, but it should have been far greater, far more seats in um, far more positions in the government should have been won. And what's, what doesn't make sense, and this is going to go, I'm going to get into Arizona specifically in a second because uh, I am an Arizona Chad myself, and that hits close to home. So I'm going to get into that in a second. But right now, talking just broadly, although things didn't go as well as they should have, a lot of these races that ended up flipping blue that were critical, 
were fucking close as shit. They were razor thin margins. Um, looking at Nevada, which <laughs> I'm going to talk about that too. Um, and a handful of other races. Um, George is actually heading towards a runoff right now. It was because of the margins were so close with Herschel Walker, like, I think like a thousand, I think even under a thousand votes behind. And there are a bunch of other races all across the country that were with these razor thin margins. And I think that does indicate something. Uh, I think it definitely does indicate the heavy polarization of this country that is going on right now among other things and i mean i mean most of these uh, races were literally within a couple thousand maybe uh like at most 5000 votes that is how close we're talking and i think that next election cycle if we fix some of the fucking problems i think that I'm going to lay out and really push forward a um, clear, concise, aggressive, consistent message. I think all of those um, very thin margin races that fl ended up flipping uh, blue could easily flip red, I think. What I'm first going to get into is messaging, as I said clearly. Um, I think, and if you look at the data shows this, actually, is that... People mainly stuck to their party lines. Um, there was very little flip um, between that, and that seemed to stay consistent through all this. The issue is with independent voters. A lot of independent voters um, either didn't turn out entirely, and I'm this is just pure data I'm talking about, or... A lot of them voted blue. A lot of the independent voters. Um, it was a close to um, a 50-50, but a lot more than should have ended up voting um, blue, voting uh, for the Democratic Party. Now, there's a few things that I think go into this. I just think, I think the messaging wasn't there. Uh, there was a lot of bullshit going on with uh, a lot of Republican candidates. A lot of the um, messaging was contradictory, and there just wasn't a powerful message this year. I think that what we need is to have strong candidates with strong messages, um, inherently right-wing messages, uh, not some of this bullshit that Dr. Oz did. By the way, yeah, um, talking about Pennsylvania, you know... If I had a nickel for every time a man who couldn't form coherent sentences won public office, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. And Fetterman fucking won. <laughs> and I, I did not even expect that to happen. Yeah, Dr. Oz lost to a fucking literally brain-damaged man. <laughs> and honestly, I'm a little surprised, but I'm not as surprised as... Honestly, some other people are. Dr. Oz was a fucking horrible candidate, objectively. An objectively fucking horrible candidate. He was just not not a good candidate. Um, I don't know why he was um, pushed into that position. I don't know why Trump pushed him into that position. Trump, Trump isn't the best at making decisions all the time. Um, Dr. Oz is a great example of that. He was. He's just not a good candidate. And I think the results show that in Pennsylvania. And he also, like many uh, Republican candidates, had different messaging, um, different beliefs, different ideology, and they were kind of watery and muddied down a bit. Um, and that is probably, I think, half of the reason why we didn't see um, the results that I think were critical for this election cycle. The next part of this uh, we're going to talk about is demographics. Ooh, yes. <laughs> we're getting spicy. I think we're all aware there's a serious demographic problem in this country. And mainly, 
if you actually look at the white vote, there was a red wave for um, uh, the white vote. White people voted overwhelmingly um, red down the ballot this year, like 58, 59% is the data I am seeing. But when it comes to minorities, very different story. Now, um, I'm not I'm not one to like point fingers at, at different uh, ethnic groups and shit, but it is something we have to acknowledge. And that, I think, also does play a role. And I think another thing to highlight is Rams Paul, I think, puts it fucking greatly. Um, takes the words right out of my mouth and says it way better than I ever could. But the gist of it is, as more and more people who are not from here flood into our country and change shit that doesn't need to be changed, who aren't really loyal to our country, don't really care about our founding principles, um, etc., the more of those people who flood in here, the more shit is going to change for the worse. And that's why I think border security and in my opinion, actually, completely closing down the borders, at least for the time being, until we figure out what the fuck is going on with our country, is the most important policy, besides, obviously, abolishing the NFA and removing all gun control. That, I think, is priority. But the second most important thing, for me anyway, is figuring out how to shut down this mass immigration problem and the flooding of uh, people coming over our border. The southern border uh, crisis is really bad. It's gotten far worse when Biden took control, obviously, as was planned. And that, if we are ever going to secure this country, needs to be figured out. But what I am going to point fingers at is women. Specifically, Zoomer women. Now, um, I'm very disappointed in my generation. I often am. I think something that's good to point out is this. You know, the left is all over um, Twitter right now, uh, shilling Gen Z and whatnot. Yeah, the Zoomers did their job, etc. But if you look at something, I think there's an interesting uh, data point to point out here. Separate Zoomer men from Zoomer women. And then look at uh, how they voted. You'll see something very fucking interesting. Very, very big split. Like, we all know that, um, this is true with all age groups, that women tend to vote more left. But in this case, the difference is, like, ridiculous. Um, like, Zoomer men, it's about almost 50-50. Um, and then with uh, Zoomer women, it's, like, 75-20 something percent it's actually insane it is actually insane so my whole takeaway uh is uh we need to fucking get control of our women bros <laughs> that's all i'm saying and that kind of uh bleeds into the arizona election which i'm gonna talk a little bit about specifically <laughs> now i don't think i'm gonna be leaving uh my neighbors in nevada um out on this either you know the entire election the way it was fucking handled, the certification in Arizona, but also in Nevada, it, it was an absolute joke. It, it was an absolute nightmare. It was a clown show. And I'm not saying that um, it was fortified. I'm not saying that, YouTube. I'm not saying anything like that at all. But what I am saying is whether it was fortified or not, it doesn't really matter. This election, the way this election was handled, is an absolute fucking clown show joke nightmare. I don't know if they have people from the fucking DMV running these elections, but whatever the hell went on needs to stop. I, like, that is the kind of shit that extremely disenfranchises people and makes people not want to vote. It's what makes people not trust the system. It is what makes people not vote and not want to participate in this clearly unacceptable, unreliable process. 
what we need is a election situation like Florida. Florida ran their election extremely smoothly. The results were in in like a couple days, under a couple days even, and everything ran smoothly. There was no fucking problems, no 48-hour gap where votes weren't counted, no machines not working, no having to freaking move shit around to different locations, none of that bull crap. It was done extremely well and we need that situation um in arizona and we need that situation in nevada and we need that countrywide actually whatever they're doing is working and everyone else needs to get their fucking shit together a lot of crazy coincidences like uh how uh carrie lake was about to overtake katie hobbs and then after 70 percent of the vote was counted they just stopped counting and then all of a sudden they started counting again and katie hobbs just started shooting up coincidences like that now, um, another funny, quirky little coincidence is Carrie Lake was way ahead of Katie Hobbs in the polls, 4 to 5% ahead. And, and those were the polls in left-wing outlets, uh, outlets in polls that are obviously and have historically favored the Democratic Party heavily. Even they were saying uh, Carrie Lake was going to win, but all of a sudden, against everyone's expectations— Katie Hobbs somehow managed to pull this one through and uh, beat Carrie Lake. Katie Hobbs, who didn't even debate Carrie Lake, Katie Hobbs, who didn't even fucking campaign hardly at all, and also Katie Hobbs, who is also the literal secretary of state, who is in charge of the elections. I'm not, I'm not shitting you on that. If that's not a conflict of interest, I don't know what fucking is. She is literally the one counting the votes. Absolute jack shit nightmare. I definitely do think that she should sue. She needs to sue this entire process because, again, it was just unacceptable. There was a bunch of other discrepancies that really don't make sense that went on. And I, we need more than just a recount. This needs a full investigation. Um, and this needs to be fixed. This um, mail-in ballot new system that they uh, created during the uh, 2020 election is extremely dysfunctional. And in my opinion, I think it's by design. I think it's designed to be that way. But again, uh, I'm not saying that's for certain. I'm just uh, spitballing here. I'm still also very disappointed that uh, Blake Masters lost. I really wanted him to win. He was one of the only candidates I was actually like excited to vote for like i actually wanted to vote for him it's funny too because the attack ads that were shoved down everyone's throats actually convinced me to vote for him funnily enough <laughs> like i was debating if i was going to vote at all and that's what convinced me to end up actually going to vote but anyway that's going to be about it for today i'm kentucky fried pepe and this is my analysis of the 2022 midterms election